Today's going to be a lot of fun because we're taking the kids out to take a peek at the intertidal area. That boundary between the land and sea is always moving around and so the intertidal zone is where that happens. And so today we're going to take the kids out and see what we can see and let them find some interesting things on the beach. Do you think everybody in your class can fit on this one piece of wood? Can everybody look out to the ocean? Everyone can see the ocean way down there? So right now it is what we call low tide. So the ocean is way out there. What happens, does anybody know what happens when it's high tide? So maybe everyone can stand up and sort of put on your detective glasses and can you guys see or guess where you think the tide, the ocean will come up to at high tide? Can you use your, your detective glasses to see if you can see any clues along the beach that might tell us how high the water comes at high tide? Does anyone see anything, Tegan? Seaweed. seaweed. Oh, when we're at a beach and we can see sort of this line of seaweed and sticks and debris, this is a good clue that tells us this is a, how high the tide comes at high tide. So we have this amazing space between high tide and between low tide. Oh, yeah. So this area between high and low tide is called the intertidal zone. And the intertidal zone is this amazing area that we can explore we can harvest food from, we can get a glimpse, a peek into the ocean world, and we can actually walk through it. But the intertidal zone is also an area where people can, can harm if we're not careful. This is a great beach to explore and to see a lot of different habitats, a lot of different creatures in a small area. So when you look out, you see the green uh, that you can see, that's eelgrass. So it's not a seaweed, it's a true plant. And eelgrass is an incredibly important habitat for a lot of different marine creatures. Often people call eelgrass meadows, they call them eelgrass meadows, the nurseries of the ocean. So this is a very important habitat. It's also a habitat that is fairly easy for people to disturb. So you can imagine pulling boats up or anchoring boats or building docks. Um, the eelgrass, because it's a true plant, it has a root system. And once that's disturbed, it's not necessarily going to grow back. And because this is sort of the nursery of the oceans, you can imagine the repercussions of, of harming those nurseries. You have less babies, less successful reproduction, you know, less creatures in the ocean. So just a really rich, rich area. Are you guys ready to do some exploring? Yeah. We've done a lot of talking, so we should do some, some exploring. We need to be respectful, we need to be responsible, and we need to be ready to learn. So let's see what we can find. Now, do we think this is... You got a crab! And I'm down the moon's nest, I put it on the left. Good job. Do you have it on your sheet to check off? No. But, watch this. It is empty. There is no crab in this shell. Where did its bottom go? So where do you think the crab went? Anybody have an idea? To a new shell. It grew itself a new, bigger shell. And because the shell can't grow, the crab actually backs right out of its old, too small shell, and it has, it grows a much bigger one. So you know what I'm going to look for is a moon snail. And have you found a moon snail? Let's go over and have a look at the moon snail, okay? What do you guys think this is? Kelp. It kelp. looks kind of like kelp. What, any other guesses? This this one's bad. It looks like, oh, yeah. So this is actually a moon snail casing. Have you got one? They lay their eggs, and they have their eggs that are kind of deposited inside these, these casings. Oh, the moon snail egg casing. Okay, I'm going to try to find a real moon snail, because there was a bunch down here yesterday. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my, 
crab. That's another molten crab. It's too heavy, Dad. <gasps> now, what do you guys do? You guys see this? Can you see this poking up out of the sand? Do you know what that is? Be gentle. <gasps> that is a giant clam called a gooey duck. Here's another one, here's another one. Okay, we need to walk softly. And do you see this? They camouflage really well, which means they hide in with the environment. <laughs> so those are clams that are under the sand. So as we're walking along, there's actually hundreds and hundreds of animals under the sand, under our feet. We all are stewards of the earth. And it can be a big job to think about being a steward of the entire earth. So how I like to think of it is I pick a special place to be a steward of. And maybe that's your backyard. You can keep it clean. You can look after it. Um, maybe that's a special section of beach. You can go down and you can check on the plants and animals. What are the animals in? This animal is called a moon snail. So you can see it's great big snail shell. If you'd like, you can touch the skin of the moon snail. It's really neat. And tell me it's what really it feels neat, like. Does anyone have some words to describe? <laughs> Slimy, goopy, yeah, gooey. He said that's yeah. Die. It likes to cruise around with this big, fleshy, gooey, slimy foot, and it actually goes under the sand and it hunts for clams. So this animal likes to eat clams. And have you guys ever seen a clam shell that has a hole in it like yeah. that? Yeah. Do you guys find yeah. these on the beach? I want to see it, eat it. Okay. Can check it off? So. I had to check. How do you think the moon snail makes that perfect circle in the shell to eat the clam? Digging. Do you think it digs in? Or drills. It drills! That's a great word! It drills! Moon snails have this special appendage called a radula that's really, really rough like a drill. And they will actually drill that hole in the clam shell and then they will drink the clam out of the shell. So when you find shells like this with the hole in it, you know it's been eaten by a moon snail. Because it's totally overwhelming to think about looking after the entire planet. We can pick little areas. There might be a little section of forest that is really special to you. And you can be the steward of that spot. You can go, you can check on the plants and animals. You can walk carefully and observe what's living there and growing there. You can pick up garbage you can see. You can tell other people how they can be stewards of their own special place. And if everybody picks a section of beach or a little bit of forest and looks after it, all of a sudden we have this area that we're taking care of and we're stewards for. Um, and the plants and the animals can live and thrive. Um, and in little ways, we can make sure that we're protecting the entire planet. Because if everybody in the world picked a special space or place to be the steward of, then we would be looking after the entire world. Yeah.